Hey guys, so let's get started. Um, sorry I couldn't be there today. My flight got cancelled in Dubai, so I'm um, joining you all online. Uh, so my name is Daoud. This is uh, a session about teacher training to refugees and displaced people. I'm working with uh, Refugee Ed and um, We Educate to uh, get this project across. So let's get started. Um, hmm. Okay, so I'll leave any, if you have any questions, we'll leave the questions towards the end. Get started on the first slide. So any, for us to be able to understand the presentation, first we kind of have to understand who the refugees and displaced people are. So according to the UN Refugee Agency, a refugee is someone who's forced to flee their home uh, due to prosecution, uh, war, violence. Um, their fear of prosecution they, for reasons including race, religion, nationality, political opinions, and membership of uh, particular social groups. They cannot return to their home or they're afraid to. Um, so war is the main reason why people flee. And 52% of people nowadays, uh, the refugees are from Syria, Ukraine, and Afghanistan. Okay. Um, and then we've got um, internally displaced people, or people who have uh, fled their homes but haven't crossed any international borders and uh, they seek safety wherever they can and um, but they're not protected by international law or they're they're not eligible for aid either because they haven't crossed any borders and are still protected by their own government most of these people displaced people internally are from colombia syria congo and yemen and um, recently there's been an increase in people um, who have become displaced due to climate change so global warming problems relating to climate uh, so it's not just war and um, political issues. And we can see that um, as of 2022, there are 108 million people who are forcibly displaced around the world. 35 million are refugees, 62 million are uh, internally displaced people, 5 million asylum seekers and 5 million are in need of international protection. So. We'll be focusing on refugees that are across Mediterranean borders, so going into Greece, Spain, Italy. So as you can see from here, from 2000 and 2016, there was just under 400,000 people that crossed the borders uh, into Europe illegally uh, through the Mediterranean Sea. And that number went down all the way up to 2020, but it's on the increase again due to wars and problems happening around the world. And uh, the amount of deaths as well, 2016, you can see a lot of people died at sea, goes up to over 5,000 people, went down again to 2,000, but then it's on the increase again. So, um, yeah. And the, the, the last figure I think you can see there, that's, to, that's halfway through 2023, so this went up again. So from the map here on this screen, you can see that most people are coming in through Turkey into islands, the, the smaller islands, Greek islands like Lesbos and uh, Samos. And they're coming in on makeshift boats, which is um, very unsafe. People, that's why a lot of people are losing their lives, as you can see from the picture there. They're, uh, it just, it looks really dangerous. And a lot of people are losing their lives. From what I've seen from working on the islands as well, a lot of the people that have made it over via boats are the, the youth, um, children, you don't really see many there. It's mainly the young people, the children coming through the mainland. So a lot of people are entering Greece as well through the mainland, going through Turkey via the borders, going into Greece uh, via land. Second. Okay. Okay, so from here, we can see from the uh, from the charts here, that um, we can see from the charts here that um, when refugees enter Greece or into Europe, they're in need of shelter, they're in need of food, water, hygiene, and education. So, eighty-four percent of children around the world have got secondary education, whereas that number we're regarding refugees is only twenty-three percent. So it's a big difference. So primary education. For refugees, that about 63% of them are in primary education. 
Uh, 24% are in secondary education and only 3% are in higher education. So as we can see, the numbers there, they're quite low. They're getting lower through secondary and higher education. Um, and obviously the European countries and the, the Greek government, they're doing their best to accommodate children into schools, but due to um, strain on the system, the high influx of refugees, they can't cater to everybody. So not everyone's able to get education. And that's where we come in. So who are we? Refugee Ed and uh, We Educate have collaborated together. Um, we collaborated to run teacher training and capacity building uh, programs tailored for individuals who are currently working or have lived with displacement. Uh, so the mission is to ensure that both children and adults in these communities have access to quality education that is not only supported, but also provided by their own community members. So not just sending out refugees to kind of, uh, sending out volunteers to, to teach, they're also training the, the people who are displaced, the communities they've got, the, the NGOs, to be able to teach their own people as well. So it's not reliant, it's sustainability. So what's our mission? So our programs are designed to recognize and harness local potential, thereby empowered, empowering uh, community-led education and strengthening the education foundation within these communities. So the main project is working with education and trying to get um, things better so everyone's got access to education. And this is what we're doing. So, so we've got a TEFL course and the TEFL course is basically teaching the um, teaching people how to become English teachers. We've got a master TEFL course, which is 120 hours and a 40 hour basic TEFL course. Um, both provide the participants with certificates. This is the project I've worked on, the CTT, or I'm working on, the Community Teacher Training Programme. So this is teaching how people how to become teachers, not just English teachers, but teachers in general, how to become teachers, training, training them up and getting them ready for teaching, working with them on, um, you say, on uh, classroom management techniques and... Um, so, classroom games, giving instructions, et cetera. Uh, we also got capacity building, which is people that are working with, um, with displaced people, uh, like volunteers and displaced people and management NGOs, teaching them, getting them ready for dealing with trauma and uh, things of that nature. And we've got the Edu, Edu Connect transferable skills one, which is working with uh, leadership skills, uh, cultural awareness, and things around that nature. So for me, I'm working with the C CTT program, so I specialize in that one. So we're going to go into some details about that. So basically, we start off with, well, there's a lot of flexibility, actually. We've got a lot of flexibility with how we do it, depending on how many people are taking or attending the, um, attending the course we've got. So it usually starts off with an eight week course online. So I'll be there once a week online, usually Fridays, because we'll not get a bit of time off. And uh, we'll train them up on different areas of teaching, including classroom management techniques for the classroom games. They'll get on their seats and practice some of the activities as well. Um, and we'll feed back every week as well. So some of them, they haven't been teaching before. And uh, after the first two or three weeks, they feel a bit confident enough to start a class. So we put them into a classroom. Uh, I communicate with the NGOs and try to, um, the, the organizations on the ground and try to get them classes so they can practice what they've been doing with me throughout the week. And we feedback every week. So from the pictures here, you can see from the left hand side, this was a group in Samos, three guys. Um, they are two are from uh, Sierra Leone and the one in the middle is from Syria. The Syrian guy was he was he was with me for the eight weeks of the online courses and he was he never taught before and he was uh he started teaching after two three weeks he was getting really interested in it and uh did some amazing work so the teacher training course really did get them ready in the middle you can see uh this is this is a group from i think it was uh Kavala, um which is a small part in the mainland and uh there are two girls from uh from iraqi kurdistan and they were they come every week and they were doing a training course as well and they they're able to teach uh teach students we're giving feedback every week from that so after we do the online course for eight weeks 
comes here. So I like to fly out to Greece and then we do the face to face training. So I'll give about two more sessions. So when I fly out there, we um, we do feedback, we do observations. Maybe I co-teach with them. They teach classes. I watch them. They tell me to teach a class. They watch me. We give feedback to each other. Um, the first pitch you can see there is um, that's from a place called Neo Cavallis. Um, it's a camp um, where they actually have the um, the training set, the train the, the the classrooms. So the classrooms are on the on the camp on the base. So uh, we were doing training videos for them to um, for them to practice with and to um, for them to you know use for later purposes when they have their own teachers and they want to train them up. So I was doing videos for them. Uh, that was about setting up instructions. Below, there's a picture of us in a camp, uh, in a in a tent. Sorry. So the tent. This was in Samos. This is off of the um, off of the um, where they're living, off of the camp. It's in the middle of the mountains, actually, and it's got no electricity, no water. But they go there and they they learn. So at the end of the day, they end of training. They the the learning part of the day. They play football, as you can see there, or they play. We got table tennis. They got football. They play games but in the middle that's basically the kind of classroom setup they have so we've got a whiteboard few tables around no electricity or water no technology there um gravel on the ground um, it's quite rough but that's how they're that's how they're studying that's how they're learning and they're, they're doing well um the bottom picture on the right that's me giving a session to um volunteers so when I go out there, the um, organization at the time, Refugee, they kind of get me to do the training. Then they throw me in these other places as well, like um, to work with um, the volunteers and give them a training session, how to teach. A lot of them are newly qualified teachers or not even qualified teachers. They just want to give back and do something. They they need a lot of help with um, with teaching. Some people, they, they maybe pass a CELTA course, but they can't get experience anywhere. So they go out and do refugee, um, the um, volunteer work with refugees, teaching them for a year or two just to get that experience so they can go out and get better jobs or whatever. So it's a, it's a good place where people can give back and, um, yeah, and get their first year of experience. So I was able to do a few sessions while I was out there. That session was in uh, Thessaloniki in the north. And... Um, yeah, so I'm going to show us a video. Let me see if I can share the sound. Share the sound, yeah. So, this, before we start the video, and um, this slide, thank you. So, before we start the video, I want to uh, tell us about a, a participant we had on one of the CTT courses. Uh, this was, um, she was a young girl. And we couldn't put her onto the course at the at the beginning because of child protection reasons. She's uh, all the people on the course were um, adults, and she was a child, so she was 13 years old, student from uh, Afghanistan. But she really wanted to go in, so we got consent forms and everything, and she was able to um, she was able to participate. So she started the online course with me, online training with us. There was a group of us at the beginning. It was started with about six people. It went down because some people get their asylum when they move out. Some people, um, they stay or whatever. And um, but because of the winter, some of them stop going because it gets really cold. And you can see from that picture there, they're kind of living in wooden sheds or they're living in um, uh, shipping containers. So it's really, really cold in the north of Greece. So, um, but she continued the whole way through. She was... Um, She's an amazing, uh, amazing student. Um, she's able to speak five languages. So she helped me out with a lot of the translation. So as again, the CTT program, it's not just um, English um, teachers that are training. It's, I had a maths teacher, her English level was low. And uh, the young girl, she was able to translate for me and um, get the message across. So when I was giving classroom management techniques or whatever, or giving instructions, she would say, you have to do this and give, we'll give feedback about certain things and she would translate it back to me. So yeah, she was um, she was really helpful throughout the whole course. And uh, when I arrived to the course, uh, when I arrived to the to the camp where they were, I was able to go into the area where they were living as well, because it was um, it's where the training course was, so the, the, the classrooms were as well. And organization drops in the ocean gave us access to the, to the camp, so I was able to go in. And uh, I was able to watch her classes. And um, it was amazing. So it was just um, 
she was teaching both adults and children and uh, she was using all of the techniques that we were going through for the whole um eight weeks of the course it's kind of like watching myself as like um as a 13 year old girl i guess i was just seeing myself actually um everything i would do in a classroom she was kind of doing it but she had no classroom experience before but she was just really dedicated um talented she blew us all away with how she was teaching command in the classroom basically um so in this video i'm about to show us basically i was um at a boxing class actually so some of the youth on the um at the camp they uh they wanted to um they asked we, we got to talking and they knew i did a bit of boxing so they wanted some boxing classes so before i went to the, te teach them um some boxing techniques or whatever they um this the young girl say that she came to me and said can you watch this last class i've got for the day and give me feedback and can you teach half of it so i can see how you would teach it so i said okay finished the boxing went over there and um she had a group of students and um yeah i'll show you the the video basically Let's, um try and play it if it plays <laughs> What is it? Tell me if you don't know what is it. <laughs> you don't know, you say no, no. Drain, yes, drain. Good. Good. Six points, two points. What's this one here? With the lemon, what did you Orange. Begin to test. Lemon. Lemon, ah, you Ah. Sweet. Ah, yeah, squeeze, good. Good, squeeze. Okay, I won't go on any further with that. So, um, this slide here, I'm going to... So, this is uh, the young girl I was talking about. So, yeah, that she's teaching, she's making videos for other teachers to be able to, um, so they can learn from her, how she's teaching. So one of her favorite techniques of um, teaching vocabulary was the border race. Uh, I taught her the border race with uh, fruit and vegetables and things, and then she adapted it. So we talked about adapting materials as well during the eight weeks, and she was able to adapt this, um, the border race into teaching numbers and letters. But in this video here, she's um, she's making a video for her other people on the bank uh, on the uh, the camp, the Afghan um, uh, displaced people, and uh, so they can become teachers as well. So show a quick small part of this video. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that was her giving the instructions on how to do it. And then she went on and did it. And, you know, it's part of her development video for the other people. So not only was she, she just became a teacher. She's now making teacher training videos herself. So, and this, this young girl, she blew me away. And even giving her feedback on her teaching as well, it was um, really emotional doing it because it, I wanted to give her all the best feedback I could, like more than words could say. She was really she she basically changed me as a teacher as, as a teacher teacher trainer as well like sometimes we 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 train people and we feel like have i really changed anything or have i given them any benefit but with this it was so rewarding the most rewarding teaching experience i've had in my life and um kept me wanting to go on and do more um 
and it was for free. It was volunteer work I was doing. I wasn't getting paid for it. So that's why it was more, it was special for me as well. So go to the next slide. So here's what we've achieved so far. Um, so from the community teacher training course, we've had six um, six cohorts and 46 people we've taught uh, or were trained to be teachers. Not everybody has uh, continued all the way through. Some of them got asylum and left halfway through. Some of them uh, couldn't continue, but uh, that's how much we, we've done so far. Uh, when I fly out there, I thought uh, this we give certificates and we give um, medals for the strongest um, trainers as well. And yeah, obviously we're an NGO as well, so we we rely on funding and stuff. So here's fund some fundraising I've done. So my first one was uh, a marathon run I did with uh, it was this the first picture at the top. It was during COVID, so I couldn't um, couldn't the marathons all got cancelled, so I had to do a virtual one. But we raised over a thousand pounds for that one, which helped the organisation continue the project continue, and we basically run on funding. In the middle, uh, below that one is the one I ran around the pyramids. Um, middle one is one, um, where's that? That's Thessaloniki Night Marathon. I ran that with another um, another trainer who works with Trauma Jazz. He, uh, and we run that together. We raised over a thousand again. So, um, and the other ones are just me running them just to stay in shape because I never know when the next one's going to be. But I like to do these fundraisers and we rely on funding heavily because we don't get government funding or anything. And in order to keep the, to, yeah, yeah, we've got materials for the classrooms, we projectors, whatever, just for the materials for us to keep going, we rely heavily on funding. Um, and here's the last slide here. So if you want to take part, or if you want to get involved, you can do many different ways. One of them is just to donate. There's a QR code if you want to donate, it will take you to the, um, to the uh, place where you can donate. There's the bank details as well. If you want to volunteer, uh, at the moment, Refugee Ed and um, We Educate, they're collaborating, but they're still under their own websites. So there's the two websites there. And if you have any questions for me after the presentation, there's, um, there's my LinkedIn. Reach out to me. I'm active on LinkedIn all the time. And um, yeah, feel free to contact me anytime if you're interested in any other questions. And um, I'll leave that on the screen there, but I want to thank everyone for coming today. Has anyone got any questions online or at the um, Tesla Arabia? Anyone online put something in the chat? No? Okay, man, you want to type any questions? Thanks, Nora, thank you. Which group of it's what you're working with? Um, which geographic? How how do you mean which uh, geographics? Like um, the location where we're working, or Which countries are oh. so um I do most of my work from Greece, but there are other um there are other um, countries working um uh, what is it Serbia, um Bosnia. And there was talk about us starting in Lebanon, but um for many reasons we couldn't do that. Um but yeah, we're mainly in Greece. We're set up in Greece, we're all in Greece. Um head office where we work mostly is in Greece. And in the UK, where are most people from? Most people are from, um, well, nowadays, Syria um, and Afghanistan. Uh, but there's going to be more of an influx from Palestine. There were a few Palestinians while I was there, but due to the problems there, um, got quite a few people coming in from Palestine now, I've heard. Um, I'll probably be going out again in June, so June or July, so I'll be able to get a better idea. But where are refugees from? Mainly from Afghanistan, yeah. Afghanistan and uh, Syria. And a lot from African countries as well, like um, 
uh, from Sierra Leone. We've had a few uh, Congo as well. How are the certificates paid for? Are the shelters? Uh, the certificates are paid for by nobody. Had. We kind of print them off ourselves. They're not uh, accredited. We tried to get accreditation before, but it's out, it was out of our budget. Um, that's why we rely on funding. But uh, we make our own in-house certificates, which they can use outside, maybe as kind of proof that they've done something. Um, are they CELTA qualified? Um, a lot of them are not. No, no one's CELTA. The, some of the volunteers that go there, they're CELTA qualified, trying to get their first year. Uh, the trainers we've got, the CCT trainers, um, all CELTA qualified, some Delta qualified. Uh, but as of now, I think it's me and a couple of other people only doing it. Why don't CELTA or give qualifications as volunteers? It's financial. How much is the CELTA nowadays? <laughs> it's like out of people's budget. So they some people get a, a, a TEFL certificate online, which isn't really recognized all over the place, not everywhere. And they'll um they'll go with that. And when they've got a job, when they're making a bit of money, they'll go for the CELTA after. But it's financial reasons, I guess. Any other questions? Yeah, they should. They should. Uh, we approach one. I'm not going to give any names of the company, but um, one of the companies told us basically, we'll do it for you as you're um, as you're working with refugees. We'll give you a discount, and they told us like um, 100 pounds a certificate, 100 pounds, and we've got what eight people on this, 800 pounds. We, we couldn't do it. Um, I made the whole um, training course as well. We made a training course to put it together to get a testation or a, to get accreditation for it, and the accrediting body or the, the institute we were going through, they they told me that price and it was out of our budget. We couldn't do it. Um, no more keep so okay. So thanks for everyone. Um and uh any questions join me on LinkedIn, follow me on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn, any other questions and uh yeah thanks for thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you. <laughs>